My name is uh, in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Hallelujah. And I'm welcoming you to the uh, service today. This is January the 30th, 2022. We praise God for your appearance here today. We praise God for his anointing here today. We praise God for all that he has brought us through. We praise God, amen, for every good and perfect gift that he rains down for us. Amen. He just is so worthy of praise and honor. And we just bless you today. We thank God for your families. We thank God for you. We thank God. Hallelujah for health. Amen. Amen. We thank God for strength. Yes. We thank God that if you're dealing with sickness, that he can bring you through. Yes. That he Amen. is the healer. He is the great and awesome God who is able to do great things but fail. Amen. Amen. So that means the whole list of things he can do, the possibilities are out there. Yes. But he can't fail. Can't fail. He cannot fail. Mm -hmm. So he is greater than everything that we're going through, and we praise God that he's on our side. Amen. Yes, yes. My name is Delilian Romero. I am Pastor yes. Ray Romero, Dr. Ray Romero's wife. Yeah, and uh, on, uh, it'll be 30 years this year. Hi. Hey! Yeah. Oh! praise for 15 years of traveling back and forth to Elizabethtown. Yes, Today yes. We, we saw our first accident and uh, we have been praying for the driver and believe in God. So we're, we saw the accident. I think we were the first people to call the state troopers and we're praising God that it was not fatal. Amen. So we saw that the accident happened and everything and we just praise God for safe travel for 15 years. Amen. Amen. So we Amen. praise God. So glory to God. I am now going to yield to Pastor Terry Connor, mm -hmm. who is going to give us our scripture today. Is that correct, Pastor? Yes. And we honor God today with Pastor Terry Connor because Amen. he's getting married next week. Hey! Ah! And we celebrate that. We great life here at Kingdom Life Ministries International because life is what God has given us Excellent. and we're going to live it more, you know, more than more. Amen. Because God is able. Amen. Come, Come on, on, Brother Terry. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, God is good. God is good. I said, the Lord, the Lord is my strength, is my strength and, my shield. and my shield. Let me tell you this, you know, it's, it's, it's always an honor to be here at Elizabeth Town at Kingdom Life Ministries International. Yes. I've been here probably about 11, going on 12 years with Pastor Ray, and it's been an awesome experience and an awesome ride, and, and we still go, still riding that roller coaster. Amen. You know? Uh, towards, towards the kingdom of God. Um, I just want to share some things with you real quick. Like, and it's coming out of the Bible too. And you know, we go through trials and tribulations, sure. and people are put in your life for, for, for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. We just don't know what that reason might be. Right. You know, it could be good or bad. So that's what happens sometimes when you you know you're doing right, and they throw somebody in your path. <laughs> You guys can sit down. Yeah, I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> I have you standing for all, all service. <laughs> but they put people in your path for a reason. Yes, but yes. we got to try to figure out why is that person in my path. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you got to watch out because they're there to destroy what you have going on. That's yeah. what the enemy does. He puts put somebody out there on purpose mm -hmm. and try to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. So I just want to leave you. It says... Uh, it's coming out of Ephesians 4 and 26. It says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Yes. We have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Yes. And I know we do. We all get in, in, in arguments and stuff like that. And then next thing you know, you're going to bed mad or you're sleeping on the couch or you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing. Because the word of God says so, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then it says, you will experience God's peace when it exceeds anything we can't adjust. Understand, his peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Get this one. Yeah. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as Come well as all types of evil behavior. Come on, man. Because it's easy, real uh -huh, easy, uh -huh. to smack out the, uh, what do you call it, smack, smack out the mouth, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Spit, <laughs> talk and smack. <laughs> Okay, you know, talking smack to somebody else, then you come back and say, "Man, I should have never said that." Uh, then it's too late because the power of the tongue is wicked. Come on, man. Just keep that in mind too. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, since we we are surrounded by such huge crowd of witnesses mm -hmm. to life and faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up, mm -hmm. and let us run with endurance the grace God has set before us. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, never take revenge. Lead to the righteousness and anger of God. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says, I will revenge. I will. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind when you, when somebody cuts you off out there on the street, and it happens a lot when you're driving yeah, and they cut you off, and you, yeah. or they're, not, they're in that slow lane doing 50 mile an hour in, in a 70 mile zone, and they won't move over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what you're doing? You flip your hands up, you're doing everything <laughs> else, and it's what's mumbling out of your mouth. Get that go, you idiot! Or what you might be calling, whatever you're calling. Oh, they ain't calling them nothing. Yeah. It does happen. Let's keep that in mind, you know. Yeah. Uh, he will pay them back. Yes. Mm -hmm. He will pay them back for whatever they might have done to you yeah. or anybody else. Yeah. Yes. So with that being said, just, just bow your heads right now. Father God, we thank you for this day, Father God. We, we just want to praise and glorify you on this special day, Father. As the end of this month, it's, a, it's another chapter, Father God. It's another, another month gone, another year gone. Say, so we just praise and glorify you that this year be even better than last year. Father, we just ask you, you bless Pastor Ray with whatever words of wisdom he's going to give us today because we know it's coming good from you. Just pour the blessings upon him right now. Fill him up. Just fill him up, Father, where he overflows. He overflows onto us because it's coming from you, Father. And we just thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord's been good to us. Amen. Yes, yes. Glory to God. I do want to uh, just testify. I thank God uh, for Bishop um, last week, last Sunday. He was in Ohio yes, yes. And, um, and, and did five services in one day. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Everybody, everybody say the shift. The shift. Things are shifting. Things amen. Are shifting. Glory to God. So, <laughs> and then Pastor Chris, uh, uh, just doing his everyday thing. Glory to God. God just brings people into his life and to be part of what God's called him to do. I truly believe that things are really shifting for us. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. We got Brother Peter who's with us today. Who amen. I believe things are shifting in another direction for him. Jesus. Amen. Lord, amen. Glory amen. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Got a big shift coming for Pastor Terry. Yeah. Amen. Next yeah. week. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. The, the, the shift is amen. happening. Amen. amen. Things are amen. shifting. Amen. Glory amen. to God. And that's been the word that we've been sharing in the last couple of weeks called the shift. Amen. And so as we just begin to, to see how God is doing things, God, and, and see, traditionally, Pastor Chris, uh -huh. we have used words like, um, uh, um, let me see, expanding our borders, mm -hmm. um, a new elevation, Come on. Uh, open doors of opportunity. We have used words like that, which are good words, amen? They're good words. Yeah. Um, but I, I believe that uh, God will give us basically the same principles, but be able to put it in another perspective to help us kind of understand things a little bit better, amen? Yes. And so, you know, a, a couple of weeks back, the Lord gave me this message on the shift. Um, but it's, it's, not, it's not new to us. But the way that we're going to present it becomes a new way. Yes. Amen. Come on. Uh, because we're trying to, to uh, reach people with a different type of understanding so that they can see actually really what this looks like. Amen. I know Pastor Chris uses this, uh, this analogy. Uh, we used it as uh, uh, the renewing or transformation. A metamorphosis, and we've used yeah. all those words, right? And, right? and Pastor Chris, I think last Saturday was at the was at the men's meeting last Saturday. Yes, sir. Uh, and and, the, and, the, and I think if it wasn't this meeting, it was a meeting before you talked about how the the little caterpillar he does his little thing, okay, and he's you know wandering on the plants and the trees and, and eating and doing. But then there comes a time when when that little insect has to make a shift. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's a good caterpillar. Come on. Right? He's good. Come on. But he's limited. Mm -hmm. He's limited. Yeah. Okay? He can't move around until he makes that shift. Mm -hmm. 
Once that transformation takes place, once that shifting takes place, how many of y'all know that that caterpillar now becomes a butterfly? Okay. Yeah. And instead of being grounded, he's now able to take flight. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, he's able to take flight now, which yeah. means what? Which oh, means that he can go further. Yeah. Okay. Not only that, his purpose changes. Right. Okay. Right. So the little caterpillar, all he really does is he just eats. He just eats. He destroys crops and trees and plants and he, and he does it. But when he tra makes that, 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 that shifting or that transformation or that new elevation or that open Come door on. opportunity, yeah. however yeah. you want to play, yeah. when that happens, now instead of destroying and consuming, now he becomes part of his environment where now he causes it to increase. And in, how many of y'all know these butterflies pollinate? Poll what's that word? Pollinate. 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 They pollinate. Okay. Yes. Yes. So they're taking pollen from one flower to another flower, and now they're causing things to grow and increase and multiply. And the big y'all with me today? Come on, man. Okay. Yeah. And so so it's in the shifting. I want yeah. everybody to understand it's in the shifting where, where your purpose changes. Yes. Come on. Amen. Yes. So we, uh, originally we came out of Genesis 2 and we understand that God created everything, formed everything, made man, boom, all that kind of stuff. And then he put him in a place that he had already established. Okay. Yeah. We call it planting, but it really, the, the, the real word is, is, is uh, um, he organized the place. Okay. He created a place where man could go and now man can increase and multiply and fulfill his purpose. Yes. Amen. Yes. He organized a place. He set a place. He established a place for specifically for this man. And understand this establishment of this place that we call the Garden of Eden. Actually, uh, and y'all know I'm just going to do some, some refreshing here. It actually means a, a place of peace. Uh, means a place of prospering. It means an established place for man to dwell, to live, uh, to be able to fulfill his purpose and his mission, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we call it the Garden of Eden. And understand that the Garden of Eden cannot be located today. We don't know where the Garden of Eden They have some, some regional areas where they think that it could be. And that's because that place was established for man but once man was removed from that place, that place was removed from there. Yes. Okay? Y'all with me? Yes. Why? Because after Jesus, after the shift took place, yes. now as we became, as Adam was, kings and priests, to establish a place, now my garden of Eden will be wherever I am planted. Yes. Come on now. Okay? Wherever I, I'm going to go yeah. right. I'm planted here. I'm yes. going to prosper. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You say, well, you know, you only got a handful of people. It doesn't matter how many people I have. Jesus had 12 and turned the whole world upside down. That's it. And lost Come one. On, okay. That's it. Lost one. Okay. But it didn't stop the purpose. Amen. Amen. And so we see that that, 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 that garden of Eden, uh, that, that place that was established, uh, that, that, that atmosphere. And, and we talked a little bit about the atmosphere. You are created to dwell in a certain atmosphere where God had planted you. And if you're taken out of that atmosphere, you oh. surely are going to die. Yeah. Amen. Wow. That's why people are dying, because they're not in the right place where they're supposed to be. Amen. Yeah. And the, the, the death doesn't happen instantly. Death is corruption. Mm. Come on. And it comes a little bit at a time. Come yeah. on. Come it's on. destroyed a little bit at a time. This, this doesn't hit you right in the face. It, because the enemy is smarter than that, amen? On, the enemy knows that if I just, just knock you down completely right now, uh, you're going you're gonna to realize. But what he does is a little bit at a time, he begins to steal, kill, and destroy a little bit at a time. Because you're not in your environment. You're not in the place where you're supposed to prosper. You're not in the place where you're supposed to succeed. You're not in that place. Well, I believe that we're in the timing right now, and we use these words, we use these, these churchified words or these words, you know, uh, uh, the timing and, um, you know, uh, uh, dispensation. We yeah. use all yeah. these, these, these things. But, you know, uh, Bishop, sometimes we have to change our vocabulary 
so that this younger generation can understand what we're talking about. Amen. Amen. We Amen. use these old rugged cross. I don't know what the old rugged cross is. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Come on. You're talking to these people. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. And then we got to go through this whole explanation. But you know, if we were to change the way that we word things, mm. they can understand it better. Amen. 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 That's they can understand it better. Come on. Who's the and so then we took you from there and then we went to Genesis. Yeah. Amen. We went to the book of Genesis. Yeah. And and here God has taken Moses and he tells Moses that you're going to deliver the people from from uh, from the bondage of Egypt, and he takes them into the wilderness, and there the people, uh, they got to complaining and murmuring and that kind of stuff, and they wanted food, and they wanted water, and of course, you know, we call it murmuring complaining, but come on, the truth is, you know, if we, 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 we lose our power, we lose our water source, yeah, I think we're going to complain a little bit too. That's correct. Is that right? Amen. You know, glory to God. So, so anyway, so but it caused them they were murmuring and complaining, and I and I believe the purpose is that is because they had already seen God do all these great exploits, Amen, mm -hmm. done all these great miracles. Okay, uh -huh. he, he he defined uh, how nature was supposed to react and how it was supposed to be. He destroyed, literally destroyed a nation. Yes, he did. He destroyed a nation. He collapsed a nation, okay? He made a nation go into a depression that they had never seen before, amen? Come on. In other words, the Lord will take your enemies and he will make them as the dust of the ground and at the chant of the wind, amen? Yes. The Lord, you got to believe this thing, amen? Come on. You're, he will destroy your enemies. Come on. Okay. Come on. How many of y'all got some enemies in your life right now you want to destroy? Oh, yeah. Come and, on. And what? He's able to do it? Mm. Come on. Okay. You don't have Come a problem on. doing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, but here's the issue. The issue is Moses takes them in. Now, understand that Moses now is the government leader of all of Israel. Yes. He's the government. He is the man. Okay. And he takes them out. And, and, and God is showing him and teaching him things as they go along. But there came a time for a shift. Mm. And Moses didn't make that shift. That's right. He didn't make that Why? Wow. Because as religion and tradition of people, we like to stay in our comfort zone. We don't like to shift. We don't like change. Some of y'all like change. <laughs> uh, ain't no one raising their hand. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I like change. Yeah. Come on. I, I like change. Yeah. Okay. I've learned to embrace change. Amen. I've learned because if I don't, that means I can get stuck in a place and not be willing to move right. to the next place, okay, yeah. or for the next shifting. Sure. I'm telling you right now, those of y'all listening to me on Facebook, y'all need to pray this prayer. Lord, allow me to embrace change. Amen. Okay. Come on. Allow, Come on. Yeah, they say, well, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. God is always changing something. There's so many facets about God is that when he's changing, we don't even know that he's changing. <laughs> Come on, it man. just happens just like that. Just yeah. that quick, okay? Yeah. And, and, and look, let me tell you something. One of the reasons why the church is behind is because we had not learned to shift. Economy's hey, changing. Sad. Government's changing. Money's changing. Everything. Your health is changing. You're changing. You're getting older by the minute. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Come on Glory now. to God. Amen. How many of y'all say, well, man, I remember when I was 30. Okay? <laughs> well, in 10 years, I'm going to remember when I was 60. Mm, come you, on. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And at 70, I'm going to be like, man, I wish I was 60 again. <laughs> y'all with me? Come on, Pastor. Glory to God. But, but so, so everything is changing, but the church don't change. That's why we're still stuck. Mm -hmm. We're still stuck. That's why we're having depression. Mm -hmm. That's why we're having sickness. That's why we're being consumed by all kinds of stuff because we're not re ready and willing to change. Amen? So anyway, so they're in the wilderness. The people are thirsty. God says, strike the rock with your rod mm -hmm. and water will come forth. Um, Y'all remember that story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Moses did it and water came. So sometime later, the people complained again. We're thirsty. We want more water. Okay. So Moses, he strikes the rock, but no water comes out. He strikes the rock again, and water comes out. 
But before that, God was trying to get Moses to shift in a new level, yes, a right. new place. Yes. He told Moses, don't strike the rock, speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. Moses did not speak to the rock. He could not make the shift. Come on. He couldn't Come make on. the shift. Yes. So he smoked, he hit the rock called smoke. He hit the rock, and then he hit the rock again. And God's not a man that he should lie. I'm going to provide for you, and I'm going to give to you, and I'm going to meet all your needs. So water came forth. But the one that suffered out of all of it was Moses. Yeah. Because he told Moses, now out of your disobedience, you will not enter into the promised oh, land. That's good stuff. Amen. Let me tell you something about the shift. If you don't make the shift when it's time for you to make the shift, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, Y'all with me? Yeah. Pastor Jerry, you, you breathing back there? <laughs> oh, your heart didn't stop on me, did it? No, glory to God. Okay. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So we see the positive things about the shift, but then we also see some negative about not making the shift at the right time to make the shift. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all know how to drive a vehicle called a standard vehicle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody know how to drive a standard vehicle? Yeah. I got, got, got a couple of hands over here. Amen. Says you know how to drive a standard vehicle? No? Okay. See, this, this younger generation, they don't, what's a standard vehicle? I don't even know what that is. I, what, know, what is, I know what it is. Yeah. You can't drive it. I can't, drive I can't move my ankles. Can't, can't shift the gears. Okay, okay, I, I understand. And it's because they're not as popular as they used to be. Okay? They automated them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah, well, automated it. now. Okay? So, so you don't have to. It's too easy. Yeah. Oh, no. But check it out. There's, there's, there's another side to that. Mm, come on. It's not that they don't just make them anymore, because you can get them. Okay? But if you're not in the generation where I'm able to operate on, uh -huh. why? Because I got so many other things going on. For instance, okay, I got to use both my feet and both my hands at the same time. Okay, so you got to have a little bit of coordination. Not only that, how can I use both my hands and both my feet when I'm still trying to use my phone? Uh, uh, come on, right? Come on, now, already got something. Something I, I got to have something free in order to have my phone because I'm gonna be on my phone, okay? And and I'm gonna be calling, I'm gonna be texting, I'm gonna be answering text messages, and and and, 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 and you know, I'm not I'm not down in that. I'm just saying, is that you have to shift. Shift. Okay? Come on now. You gotta shift, right? <laughs> Your car, your automatic car, already knows when it's supposed to shift. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, it already knows. It's built into it. Yes. it it's yes. just, it's in there. It's part of the mechanical uh, chemistry, the mechanical science. That that when they created this thing, they made this thing. They made it all connected. That when a, when it hits a certain RPM, it's going to shift. Mm -hmm. I don't have to shift it. It's going to shift on its own. Amen. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get so complacent that we just don't know how to act when it's time to shift. Yeah. Amen. Y'all ready to shift? Come on. Amen. You're going to shift. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're going to shift. Things are going to change. Are you going to miss it? Amen. So now that leads me to where I'm going today. So all that is just kind of review. So understand. Now, Next Sunday, Pastor Chris, we're doing healing school, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Pastor Chris is going to be teaching on shifting from sickness to health. Mm. Come on now. Okay. Come on. Come on. How many of y'all need to shift in that area? Come on. Yes. How many of y'all need to shift? Come on. I, I need to shift, amen. Yes. I got to shift. Glory to God. Man, shoot. I wake up sometimes with some pains in my body, and I'm thinking, where did that thing go from? I didn't have it yesterday. Come on. But I woke up and I have it today. Jesus. Okay? Come on. That body has to shift. Come on. Amen? Amen. And so, yes, you do things to prevent it, but there's also healing in the Word of God. Amen. 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 And so when Amen. I'm taking my medication or I'm rubbing myself down with some icy hot or whatever I'm doing, I'm still confessing the Word of God. 
Amen. Amen. Come on. I'm still confessing the word of God. And here, just a little bit, uh, right before we close, those of y'all that are viewing with us, I want you to uh, get some communion together. We're going to take communion. We're going to take communion live today, and we want you to be part of it if you're streaming. So, so go on and get you some bread and some juice or uh, whatever. If you say, well, I don't have no bread, well, get you a cracker. Well, I don't have a cracker. Well, get you a Dorito. Get you a potato. I don't care what you get. Amen. Get you a glass of water. You know, a cup of coffee. I'm taking coffee with a cracker. I mean, a communion with a cracker and coffee. I'm not going to know. Amen. Guess what? It's not what I use to take it. It's the faith behind it. Amen. 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 Come on. It's the faith that I have yeah. in doing it. It's the faith that I have that Jesus said, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Yes. Amen. And I'm, re I'm remembering the price that he paid on the cross so that I can be healed today. Amen? Amen. So, just encourage you to do that. We're going to have communion. Pastor Chris is going to come up. He's going to give us communion. He's going to take communion here in just a little bit. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of new stuff today just to help us along. Amen? Yes. Remember, the, 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 these, um, these sessions that we're doing, they're, they're, they're created to build off of one another. Amen? Yes. And and um, and you say, well, why do you do series like this? Well, I do series simply because it helps us retain the information better. Amen. Yes. By the time we get through with this, you're gonna know. Somebody says shift, you're gonna be ready to run. <laughs> Come okay. on, man. You'll be like, oh, hold on, I know. I already got that on the inside of me. Amen. And also because the Word of God teaches us this very simple principle. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So the more that I hear the Word of God, the more information I get, the more understanding I get, the more revelation I get pertaining to the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Luke, Dr. Luke, chapter 24. Let's go there. Good. Hallelujah. Now, give me, you know, just about 10, I say about 10 more minutes. Hopefully, I'll be wrapped up in 10 minutes. I'm not going to say that I am, but I'm going to try to. Take Amen. Time. Take time. Glory Take to God. Time. Hallelujah. So, uh, Dr. Luke, ver chapter 24, and let's start in verse 13. And it says, And behold, two of them, two, two men, uh, went the same day to a village called Emmaus, Amen, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together all of the things which had happened. And it came to pass, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So there, there was not at this point in time a reason for there to be a shift. Okay? Understand that the, the shifting comes at a timing. Amen? Amen. You don't want to miss your timing. Everybody say, I don't want to miss my timing. I don't want to miss my timing. Verse 17. And he said unto them, Well, what manner of communication are these that you have one with another as you walk um, and are sad? Then basically, really what he's saying, he said, what are y'all talking about? Okay? What are y'all talking about as y'all are walking down the road and you're sad? I can tell you, you're sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto them, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and has that not known the things which will, are come to pass there in these days? Yeah. And he said unto them, What things? Mm -hmm. Sometimes Jesus is going to just see exactly what you know. What you know. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, come on, come on now. It's everybody, well, let's say that I need to know. I need to know. Come on, say, I need to know. I need, I need to, to know. know. Something. Some things. Come on. So that's the reason why we teach. That's yeah. the reason why we give instructions. Yes. Because, see, when you leave here, you should not be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Okay? You should know exactly what we talked about and where right. we're going with this thing. Amen? Yes. And he said, and they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and the word before God and all the people. And I, I could stay there for a minute because now they had already given him a title, okay? They don't know yet. He's just a prophet. 
Mm. A man of God, okay, with mighty deeds and the word of God. There, there, there's not been a shifting yet, amen? See, when you shift, you find out that this Jesus, he's not just my savior. Mm. This Jesus is now my redeemer. Yes. yes. This Jesus is my peace. Yes. Come on. This Jesus is my strength. Come on. This Jesus is my hope. Yes. Amen. So in other words, what, what we end up doing is we end up putting limitations on who this Jesus is. Yes. Okay. He was just a prophet. No, he's more than just a prophet. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. yes. Amen. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been, which he should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And yes, and certain women also of our company made us astonished that they early at the sepulcher. And when they had found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as the women had said. But him, they saw him not. Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow to heart to believe all things that the prophet have spoken. Okay, come on, come on now. Come on. Glory to God. So, so, yes. see, see, so he already sees their countenance. They're already sad. Okay, they're discussing these things. Okay, they already said, Well, oh, he's a prophet, a man of God, yes. great exploits, mighty in the word. Yes. Okay, come on. come on. And then he said, Oh, you fools, come on now, glory to God. And slow to heart to believe all things that the pro you said he was a prophet. Yes, come on. Okay, you said he was a prophet. Yeah, yeah. you slow to believe what the prophet had already told you. Yeah, you all with me? Yes, yes, come yes. on now, glory to God. Come on. And I, not the Christ, to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Mm. Come on. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto yeah. them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. You better freaks. Come on, Come on man. man. Glory to God. <laughs> so, so here, you, you, you walk, you walk, and he's now, he's going to explain to you from the beginning. Come on now. Okay. Come From on. From the beginning, he's got to explain to you all the things concerning himself. Jesus. Amen. Come on now. Glory to God. And, 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 he, and he's going to break it down. So here's some key things. So he says, he began to explain to him everything from Moses and the prophets. Okay. From Moses and the prophets. From Moses and the prophets. Jesus. So what he's showing them, he's showing, because understand that oh, Moses was the writer of the law. Up, okay, man. Moses was the writer of the law. Come up, Y'all with me? Come on. Okay. Woo! So the first five <laughs> books are called the Pentateuch. On, okay. Yeah. So the Pentateuch is Genesis, Jesus. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Oh, my okay. My so, my so, so all that's in it. So he begins to explain to them in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy about himself. Yes, sir. Mm. Come on. Okay. Come on. About himself. Come on. All right. And but nowhere in there is Jesus mentioned. No. Ah. It's not, it's not mentioned. His name's not mentioned in there. No, but on. I'm going to explain to you who I am and how I came to be and where I am in that world. Mm. Y'all with me? Come on. Come okay. On. So, so, so he broke down the law to them. So understand that the law was given to Moses. God gave law, the most law on what? On how to conduct yourself, how to behave yourself, how to live, and all the ceremonial uh, procedures of the temple. And also, if you study the tabernacle, you'll find out that all those furnishings in the tabernacle will describe Jesus himself. Mm. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yes. Every, yes. every piece yes. in there. Okay? From the outer court, inner court of the holies of holies, you will see all those furnishings, the lampstand, the brazen lamp, all that stuff in there describes who Jesus is. So he can, he can break all that down to you and show you all that, and this is who I am. Amen. Amen. Supposed to be holy. Supposed to be righteous. Okay. You got the Ten Commandments. He showed. He, he broke all that down. And then he goes back to tell them now from the prophets. So the prophets began at at, at um, uh, Moses and Joshua. So the prophets began at Joshua to Malachi. Mm. 
Come okay. On. Come on. From Joshua to Malachi, Jeez. he is now breaking it down yes. how he fits into all these different books mm. that we broke. We broke them all down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But how he is. So in 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 in, in Leviticus, you can see oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Deuteronomy, you can see Jesus. Ruth, you can see Jesus. Amen. The Psalms, you can see yeah, Jesus. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Proverbs, you can see Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, you can see you can see Jesus in all these books. So he broke it all down to. I guess they had a good way to walk. Amen. A long conversation. He explaining everything to them. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Come on. Okay. Come on. But it's but it goes on to say. It goes on to say, so, so let, let's carry on here, because I just wanted to pray that because this is what Jesus did. So, G, and understand, I need you to understand something. When he's explaining to these guys the scripture yeah. concerning himself, you have to understand, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? There was no New Testament. So the only thing he had was basically what we call Old Testament to show who he was in the scriptures. That's right. Amen. Oh. That's all he had. Oh. Okay. That's all these guys had. So now when we studied the book of Acts, when we looked at the book of Acts, and we did that in-depth study, understand that when they began to stand up and preach concerning Jesus, all they had was Old Testament. That's right. And eyewitnesses. Mm -hmm. Things that I saw, things that I heard, things that I beheld, things that I touched, things that, 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 that I was with him. Uh, I spent time with him. I know him personally. These are things that you cannot dispute. Somebody comes and says, well, you're not really saved. Well, you ain't got the right to tell me I'm not really saved because you don't really know who I am. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? I had a real life experience with Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and no one can talk me out of that. There you go. Amen. Yeah. And I mean, y'all know, you got some people trying to talk me out of it. <laughs> Amen. They try to talk me out of it. So let, let's let's move on. Let's move on here. Glory to God. So where am I? Where am I? Where did I leave off at? Uh, okay. Verse 27. 27. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all scripture the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village, uh, whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is towards evening, and the day is far spent, and, and we went in to tarry with him. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, and he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Yes. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he had talked with us by the way? And while he had opened to us the scriptures, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, has appeared to Simon. So here we see there's a shift going on. There's a shift. Come on. Something is happening. So he, he's explaining, he's expounding, he's talking to them, he's walking with them. And at the same time that he's doing this, something is happening on the inside of them. There's a shifting that's going on on the inside. Because they said, did our hearts not burn within us? Yes. As he expound these things, as he talked, there's a shift okay. taking place. There's a shift happening. There's a shift happening. But it wasn't until that moment in time that he took that bread and he broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened. At that moment in time, their lives and their perspective had just changed. They had just made that shift. Now, they were going out. They, were, they, they went to find the other 11. They went to find the 11. Now, the 11 should have been the ones that were finding everybody else. Amen. What am I saying to you? God is an individual God. Amen. God's a God of purpose. God's a God of timing and place. God is going to meet you where you are, and God is going to shift you to a new direction and to a new revelation. Amen? Are you all ready for a shift? Come on, man. I'm going to tell you, glory to God, I'm, I'm ready for a shift. Amen? Yes. Yes. Things yes. are getting ready to happen. Glory to God. And they may not happen the way, the, the problem is, don't expect it always to happen the way that you want it to happen. That's right. Amen? Amen. 
Don't, don't expect it always happen the way you want it to happen. Because that's where you get disappointed. Because you say, well, God should have did it this way. God should have did it that way. It doesn't matter how God does it as long as he does it. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I remember years ago when Pastor Chris was in Warsaw, Kentucky. And he had a nice job working at a steel factory, making a lot of money, had his family, everybody was there. But it was a shifting time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he didn't know how to make that shift. He didn't know. And, and how, let me tell you all, sometimes when you're in the middle of the shift, it can get kind of intimidating. Amen. Yeah, right. You, you, you kind of get a little scared at sometimes because you just, I just don't know how this thing is going to work out. I don't know how this thing is going to going to turn out. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Y'all with me today. Amen. Yeah, because Come you, on. And but. Glory to God, when the shift happened, he shifted, amen? Jeez. And he came to Louisville, settled down in Louisville, and today, to this day, did not know it then, and a lot of times you don't know what's going to happen, but today, he's working for the water company, he's making tons of money, just bought a house, new cars, and meeting with the president of the company to discuss things pertaining to the company executive level, of things at the Louisville Water Company. Amen. Amen. Come on, you never Amen. know that was going to happen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You had no idea that was going to happen. But it was in the ship. But if he did, he could still stay and he could be in Warsaw right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Punching the clock. Okay. Yeah. Punching the clock. Yeah. But no, glory to God, he made that ship. And then making that ship, now he has Bible studies on, sun, on Saturday mornings. God is using him to minister in different places. Things are happening. Amen. Amen. You've got to be ready for the ship. Bishop, you got to be ready for the ship. you got to be prepared right now for the ship. The ship is going to come. Glory Amen. to God. I'd rather be in the ship to be in God's perfect will than miss the ship. Amen. Come on now. It's got to happen. Glory yeah. to God. we got to yeah. do this thing. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the inside. It just does not matter. Glory to God. Those dudes were sad. They were broken hearted. They, 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 they had no hope. They had no faith. Their Savior was dead. They didn't even know what was going to happen. But he showed up and began to explain things to them and break things down to the fact that they were able to make that shift. Now, these guys were out going looking for the 11, the original 11, the mighty 11. Amen. They're going looking for them to explain to them about the shift. Amen. Y'all with me today? Come on now. Y'all ready for a ship? Yeah. Glory to God. Let's have, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I bless Jesus. you. I thank you. We love you and we glorify you. Thank oh, you for this God. time. No, we don't shut it down just yet. We're going to do communion. <laughs> thank you, sir. And we thank you and we bless you and we give you praise and we give you glory. We give you honor and we worship you and we love you. I want everybody to lift your right hand unto the Lord. Those of y'all watching, lift your right hand. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. My, right hand my right hand is lifted to you. Lifted to you. I declare today, I declare I'm, today. Shifting gears. I'm shifting gears, shifting direction, shifting, shifting, direction. Direction. shifting, momentum. shifting, shifting momentum. momentum, shifting purpose, shifting, shifting, purpose. purpose. shifting, destiny. shifting destiny. It's, destiny. Happening, it's happening right, right now. And I receive it and I receive in, it. Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So those of y'all watching, uh, you hope you have your communion. We're going to pass on our communion here. Pastor Chris is going to take communion. After Pastor Chris uh, gets done with that, Bishop is going to come. He's going to close us out. Uh, but I do want you to believe God. We're going to be praying for a couple of things here. Um, we're, we're praying for business opportunity. We're praying for business increases. Noble is believing uh, to, to have some more orders for his business. I think Sister, I don't know, what, Sister Linda, what do you believe in God for? Yeah. Anything he can give me. Anything he can give you. Glory to God. She wants it all. Amen. We want it all. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else believe in God for something? Anybody else? We're getting ready. We are in the middle of this uh, shifting time. Uh -huh. and, and we're just praying, of course, for, for the Lord to continue to uh, to give us direction. Mm -hmm. Also want to acknowledge the presence of our of our pastor, uh, 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 new son. Who's, um, who's listening uh, mm -hmm. with us from his location there. Uh, we continue to pray for you, Pastor, and uh, and we also bless you uh, uh, as you're there and bless your family and pray your protection here. 
Amen. there, sir. Amen. I do want to say we got Pastor Newsom online. We love you, so that this is part of our shifting. So yes. we have the Gomez family who's in Florida, and then we have Pastor Newsom who's on assignment in Poland right now. And uh, and so we're gonna uh, we believe in God. I do also want uh, Pastor Newsom to he's gonna do our overview on John uh, on, on uh, the second epistle of John. Uh, and so as he's preparing to send us that, uh, so that we can view that, we're excited about that as well. And, uh, God is shifting some things. God doing some things. God making some things happen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Glory to God. So, hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, so as, as we're believing for those things, we're believing for the shifting, the changing, um, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Not only is he going to do it, he's already did it. Amen. We're just here to receive it right now. Amen. So, uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Chris. He's going to come lead us in communion. Then after Pastor Chris, we'll give it to the bishop. And the bishop will close us out in a word of prayer. And, uh, and pray over all these different issues, or not issues, but these different situations we're going through. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's go right into this. Mm -hmm. Taking communion. Mm. Okay. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, all right, mm -hmm. I'm going to start here in verse 23. Okay, so here we go. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed mm -hmm. took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the, the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's talking about the finished work of Jesus now. Amen. Just so you know. Amen. All right? Because the last words that Jesus said was, it is finished. Finished. So it's a finished work. Mm -hmm. You're living from a finished work. Mm. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread oh. or drinks the cup. Now, here's where you're going to make a shift in your understanding. Come on now. Because I know for years we've heard this about communion, what I'm getting ready to say. And automatically, people either listening on Facebook mm -hmm. and wherever you're hearing this at, your mind's going to shift over into Come how on. you've been Come taught. On. Come on. And I'm getting ready to share something with you that's going right. to shift it. Right. So here we go. Yeah. Whoever, verse 27, therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner mm. will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then mm. and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. Yeah. Verse 29, for anyone who eats and drink without mm -hmm. discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Mm. Verse 30, this is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Now, what we have been taught and what I was taught yeah. was, okay, everybody take some time and bow your head yeah. and make sure you got all the stuff in your life right. If it's a time to repent, you need to repent. Yeah. This is not what the Apostle Paul was talking about. On, Over in First and 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh -huh. where it talks about uh -huh. that in Moses, okay, the what Jesus was talking about when he was explaining to them all the law, Moses, five books, and the prophets are about me. Come on. So when you read from Moses mm -hmm. and you don't read it through Christ-like lens, then there's always a veil. And in Moses, it even says it's the menstruation of death, Come on. condemnation of death, Come on. and sickness yeah. and curses and everything else. Yeah. And what the Apostle Paul was saying recognize and discern the body discern the finished work yeah. discern what Jesus finished has work. done finished and when he's talking yeah. about here um, unworthy manner it's talking about listen quit viewing yourself through the lens of the Mosaic covenant nah. and start seeing yourself through the lens of Christ Jesus nailed all of that mess to the tree, yeah. and you are now, by grace, grace. live Hallelujah. from the finished work. Yeah. That is what it means to eat 
and drink and take communion in a worthy manner. It's to recognize the finished work. It's to recognize that Jesus completed it. Right. It's to recognize that even though I may not deserve it, Jesus made me worthy. Yeah. Jesus made me deserve it. Yeah. And I do get to partake. Yeah. So, when, so it's not about you trying to find all the hidden sins and everything and get it right. That's not what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Right. The Apostle Paul says you all are sick because you are still trying to take the Communion yeah. under the old Mosaic oh, covenant. Oh, You're still oh. thinking of Egypt and Pharaoh yeah. when it was a metaphor, and you have come out of the sin. You have come, Jesus, who takes away the sin of the sin. world. Yeah. Jesus has taken it away. He has brought us out of slavery. The veil has been ripped and has been torn in two, yeah, yeah. and we can now enter into the holies of holies. Yeah. The Spirit of God is no longer on the outside, uh, but the Spirit of God has moved on the yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah, the Spirit yeah. of God didn't dwell in that temple over there yeah, yeah. made with hands, yeah. but the Spirit of God is now living in us. So you want to drink and eat it in a worthy manner? Yeah. Recognize what Jesus did. Uh, that is the worthy way of taking communion. Come on, man. Yeah. Any yeah. other way, then you get the other result. Okay. <laughs> So let's take this. I hope that helps somebody and where we're talking about still. So, hold up the bread. Okay? And I want you to say this with me. Say, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. That your body was broken for me. Your body was broken for me. So that we could be made one. We could be made one. I am one with Jesus. I am one with Jesus. And I thank you. And I thank you. For healing me. Healing me. Making me whole. Making and setting me free. Setting me free. Take and eat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to take mm -hmm. the cup. Mm -hmm. Whenever they have the blood, mm -hmm. the blood seals the deal. Come on now. Amen. The blood takes blood. everything mm -hmm. and seals the deal. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you something about it. Shift you again. Mm -hmm. About the redemptive purpose of God. Come on. In the Old Testament, they had to constantly sacrifice animals. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you that when Jesus stepped up, mm -hmm. it was the one and sacrifice for all. No more. No more. Amen. You know what that says? Mm -hmm. Our God is not a bloody, violent God. Come on, God. No. See, I'm going to say this. Jesus came into mm. our systems mm. and brought his system with him. Come on now. And God was in Christ yeah. reconciling and redeeming the world unto himself. Yeah. Blood sacrifices and things was something they did consistently. Mm -hmm. But was it where God wanted to stay? Mm -hmm. No. Oh. They had to shift. shift. And God was like, look, let me, since it's blood you want, let me give you blood. Mm. But it's going to be once and for all. Come and then on. after that, no more needed. Come on now. So, the blood seals the deal. Yeah. So we take the cup. Yeah. I'm going to put this thing down here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We take the cup and we drink. Mm. So take the cup and drink. All right. Say this with me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Say it is sealed. It is sealed. And I agree. And I agree that it, that it is, is finished. Finished. Say from that. From that. I will live my life. I will live my life. From the finished work. From the finished work. Refining. refining and, getting and getting better. At everything that Jesus has deposited on the inside of me. I am complete. I am not broken. There is nothing wrong with me. I have peace. And I am getting understanding. More and more. Of what Jesus did in me. We are one. I am a child of God. I am God's child. And nothing. Will ever separate me. From the love of God. Amen. Amen. Bishop, you're up. So sometimes we're in situations and we hear things and we say, well, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty spectacular. But I want to say something to you and also for you watching. A pastor was nowhere near me last week. Come on. Pastor wasn't around when I was talking last week. But this chapter and this, what we said today, was exactly what I spoke of 
for an hour and a half last week in Ohio. All right. This very chapter, everything that we spoke of was exactly what I spoke of last week. So it goes into the same thing. But as we continue to talk about this shifting, I want us to go back to this because we got to remember who we're talking to there mm -hmm. and who we're listening to. And sometimes we that are of the body of Christ finds ourselves kind of flopping around because we didn't quite get it, okay? So my scripture to, to end this off with, because of everything that we've talked about today, and when we listen to this again, again, I want us to think about the fact that we have to change, and we have to shift, and these things are coming to us, and, and, and that we have to take off the lens of what we saw and, and keep trying to make ourselves good boys and good girls so that we'll be good enough to under, and still understanding that the price has already been paid. When Jesus came up to them, in, in, in Luke 24, and I love this so much because sometimes he wants us to be honest and give him just an honest answer. So he comes up to, to them and asks them questions like, what are you guys talking about? But this is, this is the one person I want us to get. And they said to him, but we trusted. <laughs> it had been he yeah. who should have redeemed us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> Imagine that. Mm. <laughs> These are the guys who've been walking around with him for three years. Yeah. Yeah, listening yeah. to the things that he was saying. He wasn't a part of the 11. They would have been a part of maybe the 70 or so. Right. But they had been listening to him all this time, and they still did not get the shift, the change. Mm, come on, man. They still didn't get it. They didn't get it. Come on, they were sitting there looking at it with their two eyes watching it. But they still did not get it. And so I, my prayer to us today is, Lord, open our eyes. Come on, Bishop. Come on. Lord, open our eyes. They said, they said to him something spectacular, and I'm going to leave this as a prayer for us. Did not our eye, did not our hearts burn yeah. as he opened up to us the scriptures? Yeah. Jesus, come on now. As he opened our eyes to the scriptures, did not our hearts burn? Mm -hmm. Father God, let our hearts burn. Jesus. My prayer, Father God, let our prayer be that our hearts will burn and that the Lord will open up the eyes of our hearts so we yes. get to the scriptures Amen. because we can walk with it and we can hear it come on, Bishop. and we can hear it and come we can on, see it with our own eyes come on Bishop come on. and still come on. miss it come on. because we didn't see the change we didn't see the shift we didn't understand we saw it we saw uh, our person and we saw the, the, the burial and it's dead and it's buried and it's gone we might as well just go back home might as well yeah come on because it's dead and buried mm -hmm. and that understanding that understanding, and that's where, that's where the redemption came from. Jesus, come on. The life, the death, and the resurrection, the blood, all those things that we saw, so, oh my God, so glory, that's where the resurrection was. And that's where the, that's where the, uh, the redemption was. So I'm praying, and as they said to us, we got our hearts burned mm. as he talked to us along the way. And as he opened up our eyes, yeah. we will be able to understand the scriptures. Come on, come on. So, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the word that you've given us directly from the mind of God, because you, Spirit of God, understand the mind of God who you've given us here. Your words, your words. We should open our eyes. Father God, thank you for me directly that you open my eyes and let me see. Because I am in the middle of a transition and I must understand that it's necessary to let these things go and to shift and to change with these. So I thank you. I ask you also that you open my eyes yes. that I may be able to better understand the scriptures because those are the things that testify of you. Yes. But they're also the path, the light, of the path that I must go under. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you for you that are watching us. I thank you for you that have joined us here. Let that be your prayer. The Lord will open our hearts, open our minds, open our eyes. As he said here, did not, did, did not, did not, did not our hearts burn, okay? And, 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 and I want to get this directly as he opened up eyes, okay? And then he said to them, and they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us? We talked with us, by the way. And why he opened to us the scriptures. And the Lord opened. Come on, He's man. one of us. Come on, man. Come on. I'll leave that to you as a sweet prayer. As a sweet prayer. Now that God opened to us our eyes, opened to us the scriptures. Mm -hmm.
we may hear you, we may love you, we may serve you, embrace you with passion as you've done us. Thank God for this time. Thank, you for, thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for this service. Thank God for this prayer. Thank God for this protection. Thank God for this life. Thank God for this redemption. Thank God for everything you've done. But most of all, thank God for our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this prayer, and we leave it with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Close, just close out the audience for me. We are now going to uh, go ahead and close out our service. I thank the Lord for it. Sometimes he just lays before us a s'morgue, a, 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 a delicious meal with just everything there for our souls, and we just thank the Lord for it. So thank you all that's joining us, Pastor Newsom and Pastor Gomez and family in, 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 in Florida, and Pastor Newsom in, in, in your place there. We're praying for you, and we're holding you up before the Lord. And also, all the rest of you that are watching, Sister Malcolm, and all, all the other ones who are uh, watching us from home, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Please do continue to join us. Again, this is Kingdom Life Ministries International, under the pastorship of Dr. Ray Romero and Pastor Delina Romero in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Come and join us. Come and join us. Come and join us. Join the conversation. Join the change. Join the growth. We pray this prayer to you and leave you with this blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Thank God. Amen. Have a great day.